This is the Galaxy Note 9, and this is a phone I really didn't anticipate getting. Just for reference, before the Note 9, I had the Pixel 2 XL, so it was a bit of a jump switching from a very bare bones device to a device that has all the features that you can imagine. But let me tell you something, the Note 9, it changed my mind. Okay, so let's first start out with the design, and in my opinion, this is a very cutting edge looking phone. Year after year, Samsung improves their designs of their smartphones, and I feel like this year they've really come the closest to perfection. When looking at this phone, it really does just scream the future. From the smooth back to the subtle curves, it's a really nice looking phone. Now, the back of this phone is made out of glass, and this is something I was not used to. As I said, I had the Pixel 2 XL, and that had an aluminum back, and before that, I had an iPhone 7 and an iPhone 6, and they also had aluminum backs. So, having a glass back was definitely a new experience for me, and let me tell you something, I really don't want to go back. The glass back makes the phone feel hefty, like, really hefty. When holding this phone, it almost feels like a slab of rock, and that's a compliment. Coming from a lighter phone, I really appreciate the premium feel of this. The glass back also allows for wireless charging, and in my opinion, this is pretty convenient. Now, I don't have a Samsung fast charger, so I don't get optimal speeds when charging wirelessly, but for charging it overnight, it definitely does the job. I've maybe charged this thing with a wire three times. I find that wireless charging is something that's definitely convenient and something that definitely works. Though the glass back is nice to have, there's one big problem with it, and that's scratchability. If you're getting the Note 9, definitely put a case on it because this glass back is going to scratch like crazy. Even when taking it out of the box and setting it up, I noticed that it was covered in fingerprints. The case I have on my phone is the Samsung silicone case, and it is definitely very grippy and I feel like it could take some light drops. Now, let's talk about the sides of the phone. And the sides of this phone are actually made out of aluminum. I mean, stainless steel would have been a nice touch like on the iPhone XS, but as I said, I could live with aluminum. It's totally fine. Okay, so moving on from the sides, let's talk about the port selection. And on this phone, Samsung definitely didn't slouch. This phone has a USB-C port and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I mean, huge props for Samsung for keeping this thing in when companies like Apple removed it three years ago. Sometimes I kind of don't feel like going through the hassle of Bluetooth and just want a, a set in stone method to listen to music. So hopefully for the Galaxy Note 10, Samsung's gonna keep the headphone jack truly is a great feature. Besides the headphone jack, there's the USB-C port, and this is very common for smartphones these days. Most every Android smartphone ships with a USB-C connector, and that's for the better. USB-C can charge devices extremely quickly, and it can even output audio and video to a monitor, and well, more on that later. So now let's talk about the spectacle of this phone, and that's the screen. Now I'm sure you know by now, but this is the best screen in any smartphone, period. This screen is Super AMOLED with a resolution of 2960 by 1440. First, let's start out with the colors. Everything is extremely bright and saturated, and there's no dull color tones, unlike the Pixel 2. If I had one word to describe the screen, it would be vibrant. Now, with the vibrancy comes a great screen resolution. This screen is extremely crispy, no pun intended. When looking at the screen, you can't notice any pixel. It looks immaculate. It almost looks too good where you're kind of looking at a sticker that you kind of peel off when you're buying those cheap phones, if you know what I mean. It, it looks crazy good. What's also coming into play with the immersiveness of the screen is that it's super AMOLED. So basically, this is an OLED panel. This means that individual pixels light up, there's no backlight. But yeah, screen quality overall is absolutely fantastic. But there's one thing I don't really like, and that's the curved edges. Now, they don't bother me, but I feel like it's kind of excessive and Samsung really didn't have to put this feature into this device. When watching YouTube videos and using this phone in my day-to-day -day life, I don't really notice the edges, but it's something that Samsung really didn't have to put in. Also, I guess this ran over my head, 
This screen is 6.4 inches, and this is a really big screen for a smartphone. I guess I've been taking it for granted. If you want a phone for YouTube, Netflix, and stuff like that, this would be the phone for you. This screen is just a joy to use. So now, let's dive deeper into the phone, and let's talk about the software. So this phone is currently running Android 8.1 Oreo. I haven't received the One UI Android 9 update yet. Android 9 was released six months ago, and even still, I don't have it on this new flagship phone. A big reason for this is that Samsung customizes the heck out of Android, and to be fair, I don't really like it. Now, when just getting this phone, I thought, you know, maybe Samsung experience is not that bad. And, well, I was kind of wrong. Samsung experience is not bad, but it's not good. Let's just say it that way. Samsung adds a lot of their own personal touches to the device, such as their own messaging app and their own health app and their own this, that, and the other. It gets a little confusing after a while. Also, animations are not that great in Samsung experience. Everything seems kind of slow and kind of laggy. And a big part of the lag is that Samsung just puts so much stuff onto Android, it's hard for the processor to keep up with it. But this phone is running a Snapdragon 845 processor, along as having a water cooling system, so lag doesn't happen that much, but it still does happen. After switching to Nova Launcher, I noticed no slowdown whatsoever. Now take note of the next part because let's talk about the S Pen and this year it's been improved. The design of the S Pen has stayed the same but the big difference is that it now includes short length Bluetooth technology and I find this useful in some cases. With the short length Bluetooth technology I could take a picture with the little button on the side of the S Pen or complete any other useful command without touching the device. As terms of a stylus it's really great. There's a lot of pressure sensitivity and it definitely feels very premium. I mostly just use the S Pen for navigating around the phone. I don't tend to take notes or draw with it. In the grand scheme of things though, I could live without the S Pen. It's not a necessity, but it is definitely nice to have. And also, uh, this is really satisfying. Like, that never gets old. The button on the side of the S Pen does help me take pictures, and well, speaking of that, let's talk about the camera. This camera is pretty good. It's definitely in the top three for the best smartphone cameras. Number one being the Pixel 3, two, probably the iPhone XS, and then not far behind that one is the Note 9. The back has dual 12 megapixel cameras, the variable aperture. If you give it a lot of light, it can produce some really stunning images. The only thing is that Samsung tends to oversaturate and overbrighten their images. It's definitely not my preference, but if you edit the photos, you could get some really nice results. When it comes to the dual aperture from f1.5 to f2.4, I find it more of a gimmick than anything else. Sure, it's cool to hear the little click when the aperture opens and closes, but in day-to-day -day life, it really doesn't make a difference. Low light performance on this camera is not bad, but you don't really need to do a aperture. In terms of the telephoto lens, it's fine. It's about up to par with the iPhone XS's, and for the people who like to use the telephoto lens, I'm sure it would definitely be sufficient. Now, when it comes to the front camera, it's not that great. The front camera is 8 megapixels, and theoretically it shouldn't be a bad camera. But Samsung puts this beauty mode type of softener on it, so every photo you take with it looks softened and it looks like you're wearing makeup. Not fun. On the video end, this camera definitely performs really well. This camera could go up to 4K 60 frames per second, and results are really nice looking. This could potentially be the best video camera out of any smartphone. Stabilization is very good, and the color science is not as saturated as on the photo end. Overall, this phone is a jack of all trades, but master of none. It checks off every single piece of a good smartphone, but in the end, it's not perfect at anything. Perfection is something that you may not want to strive for. After all, the Pixel has a perfect camera, but awful, really, really bad, atrocious hardware. And in my opinion, the iPhone XS has the perfect hardware, but pretty lackluster software. So in the end, perfection may not be the best thing. And if you want a phone that's good at everything, this is the phone to get. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.